Hospitals, everybody. That's, that's really massively improved. Here's a phone. Really good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, it is a brand new day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday, September the 15th, 2021. Want to talk about something today I don't want to talk about. And that is the City of Columbia approving emergency ordinance number 2021-078, the enactment of certain emergency ordinances related to COVID-19. As you get that, more COVID restrictions this time. Columbia is expanding USC's indoor face covering requirement to include crowded outdoor spaces, including Williams Bryce. Just ridiculous. It's just freaking ridiculous. As, as, I, as I've said, you know, throughout the summer when it was like, oh, we don't need to wear a mask. And then the CDC changed their guidelines and then USC was like, JK, you got to wear a mask now. But then the state was like, yeah, no, it goes against our rule. You, you, you can't force masks. And then the Supreme Court was like, yeah, you can. So now it's like, got to wear a mask again. And now they expect it to wear a mask going to class, you know. Carolina band said you basically gotta wear a mask during rehearsal now because we're, we're close, even though we're not that close. We're not. We have 100 yards and then however much space, you know, up and down the field. We have a lot of space for us. We don't need to wear a mask. Like, like I've been saying this whole time, if you're vaccinated, you're pretty much safe from COVID. Pretty much. You have a super slim chance of catching it and an even slimmer chance of it being a bad case. Now, if you're unvaccinated, you probably don't care. And I'll say, if you don't care, if you, if you know, if you're really that worried about COVID, I doubt you're even going to William Bryce for football games. I doubt it. They're just so dumb at this point. Like, we've seen across this country with, you know, across, across football games, college and NFL, that, you know, that America is done with COVID. They're done with the, the restrictions. And honestly, as much you want to say, you don't want to say, it probably isn't going away. It's gonna be like the flu, you have to deal with it every year. We're gonna have to deal with COVID every year. It's just so infuriating. Because the ordinance was in, is in effect for a month, I think starting from the 8th. That means it's gonna cover next week's game against Kentucky, and then the week after against Troy, which are both home games. And then it's gonna just probably ruin the, the atmosphere for the Kentucky game. They announced this week it's gonna be a night game, which, you know, would have been amazing probably not going to be a great of an atmosphere because of the mask, but yeah, night game, the first SEC home game under Shane Beamer, Kentucky's going to be free, no, unless they lose in, against FCS Chattanooga, and then, you know, hopefully we're, we're not getting too embarrassed by Georgia, so we can at least have a good game despite a loss, just going to be probably ruined from this damn ordinance, but the thing that had me worried the most is that the band better not be freaking sidelined again but like that was something i didn't think about but but me and jay were talking about this a little bit and he was like we better not get sidelined i was like oh my god you're right like we better not get sidelined for the next two games or work case scenario for the rest of the dang season lock your freaking sucked with not being able to do you know live pregame and halftime and just doing it again was great during eastern illinois I swear, if Columbia take this away from us. <sighs> Headaches. This is just so dumb. And just, you know, COVID never going away, so they got to open up the damn country again. Get, get back to freaking normal already. Ridiculous.
game day eve, eve here on a Friday, September the 17th, 2021. Cox are in Athens tomorrow, taking on the Georgia Bulldogs and what's going to be probably a, a bloodbath for us, but the game's not played on paper. It's played between the lines. And then Woodruff is in Beltonia Pass tonight, taking on, I don't know what they are. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be tuned into that here shortly, but tomorrow... B-U-G-A, let's get it. So yeah, it's later, it's halftime. Woodruff is down 22 nothing to Belton, Onia Pass, the Bears, as I was told. The Bill, there was this on the other sideline, which is not great, with a high snap on a punt, return for a touchdown by Belton, Onia Pass. They've been plagued with penalties. They, there was a time when it was second and 42, with a false start and two holding penalties on the same drive. But despite that, we're down by three scores. And, you know, also a two-point conversion at halftime. And offense hasn't been able to do anything. And defense hasn't been able to get any stops. Well, Wolverines get me warmed up for tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> it's going to be a long weekend at this rate. All right, what a game that was. Woodruff falls to Beltonia Pass 21-29. to Actually... Came back after being down 22 to nothing at the half, so can't be mad at the Wolverines for the fight they put up. We lost our starting quarterback, Carson Tucker, which, you know, Ed Jackson said with that week one game against Chedney, he was doing great things. And I was like, oh, we can go on a run. I mean, that doesn't change. Once we get to the playoffs, you know, anything can happen. And not any games matter for the playoffs until we get to region games. But we lost him against Hillcrest. I don't know to what. So hopefully he's back. I think they said it'll be a few more weeks, but it's already been three weeks because of the two-week COVID pause we had. But yeah, we threw in you know new starting quarterback Jalen Tribble, in which he did not do great, and then we put in quarterback Corey Scott, who apparently were playing JV a few weeks ago. And honestly, I think like a few days ago, I think from what I heard on the broadcast. But yeah, he had he had a good game. He had a good you know second half. But yeah, first play of the second half, we got Fleeford. A flea flicker touchdown, which, you know, I love to see those kind of trick plays. I didn't love seeing East Carolina do it on, on USC in the first play of that game, but, you know, I love seeing it when, you know, Carolina or Woodruff does it. I know Doty did something like that in, in the Georgia game last year, which was nice. Hopefully Nolan does that tomorrow, or Doty or whoever starts. But, yeah. We, and we scored again in the final two minutes to get the 14-29. We had an onside kick that actually worked. And then we scored again to make it 21-29. But ironically enough, Belton Honey and Pass had 200-plus yards of penalties, probably. It was a horrendous night for them, penalty-wise. But then we were the ones that <laughs> shot ourselves in the foot at the end of the night with penalties. Because after that, 21-29, we kicked another onside kick. It was good. But then we were off sides. So we had to re-kick it, and it wasn't, and it didn't work. But then, you know, then Beltonia Pack got the got the ball back. They fumbled it and recovered it. And then on what would have been the fourth down play, we did some sort of penalty. We did some sort of thing. I don't know what we did, but it was a penalty and automatic first down, probably unsportsmanlike something. Reminds me of Marco Wilson throwing the the LSU player's shoe on what would have been the Florida fourth down, or LSU fourth down. But I can't be mad at the fight that they put up. Can't be mad at them. Going to be a good game next week for homecoming. Back home against Greer. I am debating going to that because that's the night before the Kentucky game. And that's a night kick. Night game. So, we'll see. Depends on the Kentucky schedule. But, as I mean, like the Georgia game tomorrow, it's a successful loss probably. Yeah, speaking of the Georgia game tomorrow, let's go. It's, you know... 21-ish hours till kickoff. Let's get it. All right, it is a brand new day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Saturday, September the 18th, 2021. Game day at the at the Gamecocks are heading down to Aston, Georgia to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Surely going to be an uphill battle. Shane Beamer said this is one of the probably the best Georgia team in history. Where they are going to be a national title, like a national championship contending team this season. So it's going to be an uphill fight for us. Especially since it feels like Zeb Nolan is going to be getting the start yet again, even though Beamer said Doty wasn't sore, so that he hasn't been sore all week. And, you know, we, we expect him to play Saturday if the situation calls for it, even though 
you're playing at Georgia. I feel like that's the situation, but you've got to trust in this guy. But yeah, going to be a difficult game. Keep, you know, our key to the game, we got to, you know, got to put together a lengthy drive to keep that Georgia offense off the field. We got to score. We got to, you know, got to get some big defensive turnovers and get some big plays on defense and special teams to keep it close. But hopefully it's a good game. Hopefully it's closer than the experts say it will be in, you know, go Cox. Still move them fast. Gamecocks lining up. Georgia not set. Nolan throws down the right sideline. Got him in at the 50. Hits a foot race at the 30. 25, and they cut the legs out of Josh Van. Oh, my goodness. What a nice job by Marcus Satterfield and Zeb Nolan. The dogs were literally lining up, going to try to substitute. And Zeb went over the top of a mere speed. First down, Dave Cox, they're into Georgia territory. Boom, out to the 35-yard line. Stetson calls for the football. Crossing route, picked off. Dave Cox at the 40. And the th some blockers out in front. That's Jalen Foster. He finally knocked out of bounds. Stetson Benson bit it, let it fly a little high over his tight end's head. And Jalen Foster gets his second of the year. It's 36 yard return on the play. All the way down to it looks like they're gonna mark it at the Georgia 12 yard line. Gamecocks defense had four interceptions so far this year, which ranks fifth in the FBS. Two of those, of course, returned for touchdowns by Birch and also Staley. That one was a big one too, though. Boy, good turnover. So end of the first quarter, Luke Doty, he had to come into the game after the known can got stepped on. I don't know what is it with our quarterback getting our hand stepped on, but it's 14-6. to 6. We already scored more than Clemson did against Georgia, so I will 100% take that. We Jalen Foster made a play, got an, got an interception. We only need about four more of those to stand a chance. And then, and how about Josh Van? He's making a few plays this half. One, he, the deep ball from Zeb to, to Van, and then there was one from, from Doty to Van, although that one got called back. Because he he had didn't have that great of control over it, but Luke's Luke threw a freaking bomb there. And speaking of bomb, Beamer's getting fired up, dropping f bombs. It's great, it's great. But yeah, and also Clemson struggling against Georgia Tech. I don't know what the score is right now, but it was seven nothing or seven free at halftime. They're struggling, so we'll see how that game goes. But yeah, it's it's a struggle in Athens, but. Or or holding on for dear life right now. Third down and eight. Georgia rushing four. Doty's got some time now in trouble. Going across the middle, a bullet to Brooks. A great catch being hung on by a Georgia player at the 40. He goes up to about the 43-yard line. A 16-yard gain on the play. Luke Doty with a step up and throw. Four wide receiver set ball right in the middle of the field at the 39 yard line. And hand in the backfield. Oh my goodness. Kenny McIntosh takes it right in the face from Zach Pickens. And Jabari Ellis, my goodness. What a hit on the play. Minus four. And give. McIntosh credit for not fumbling that football. I tell you, you called it, he delivered. So, yep, it's halftime now. Georgia is up 26 to 6. We literally gifted them five points at the end of the half. So, we got the ball back after after a stop at the one yard line. And then we get sacked in the end zone for a safety. And then they marked down the field and kicked the field goal, which was not great. Not great, you know play calling probably could just you know run the clock out instead of trying to to get gutsy but yeah o-line is not playing well at all making luke doty run for his life back there i mean he is a scrambler but he's still running way too much for his damn life in the backfield but yeah other than that we are fighting our defense is getting exposed hardcore against georgia which just really concerning to see our o-line play like this given what they did last season with Kevin Harris. But, we have, I mean, again, the goal is not to win, honestly. Like, like that would, like, there are victories other than winning, but hopefully we can get have a great second half. Roy three carries for eight yards. Doty, play action inside. Goes down the far sideline, long pass at the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Josh 
band. He's had some beauties tonight, and one more time he gets by him. This one from 36 yards out, and Doty with a good job of not missing it right into the arms of Ben. The extra point will make it 40-13. Bennett's got third down and six. Gonna swing one out, he's got his tailback, Milton, and Milton gets hit by Damani Staley. Still got something left, a great strike that takes him down short of the first down. It's a four yard gain. And right in front of that Gamecock bench, and the first one to get up with Damani was Shane Beamer. Johns with a career night and catches and yardage. Right in the backfield. Doty wants to throw it. Go down the near sideline. He's got Brooks a one handed catch. Oh my goodness, looks up at the last second. That's going to be. And Jalen Brooks puts the right ball up and pulls it in towards his chest. And the football is down at the Georgia 36 yard line. A 36 yard throw and catch. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's an that's a, that's a ESPN top 10 right there. A great, great catch. And, um, you know, he found the ball. He looked back and found it. And once again, a good throw by Luke Doty. Another confidence builder, Todd, for Luke Doty. Look at that clown right there. That special teams coach. Everybody we talk to. All right, so the Gamecocks fall in Aston to Georgia, 40 to 13. Honestly, it's about what you can expect. You know, it was a rough game, of course, we just aren't to Georgia's level. And you know, of course, they we we needed the stars to completely align to pull off an upset like 2019, but no one was expecting that, and that's not where success comes from. I feel like we had a successful game, honestly. I mean, for all, if you want to be like, oh, we're better than Clemson. We scored a touchdown. Clemson didn't score a touchdown against Georgia. We had 82 rushing yards. Clemson had two. So we're better than Georgia than Clemson. So suck it. But yeah, Luke Doty had he had, he had a good night. Running backs, I guess, had a good night. I mean, their front seven are, are dominant in you know every which way. But our guys just kept fighting. Josh Van made some incredible plays. Jalen Brooks had an incredible touchdown pass. Defense kept fighting. Like we like the only like the only really thing I can even complain about with the, the offensive line. That's the only thing I can complain about. I don't know what's wrong with them besides the fact that they had to go up against Georgia's defensive line, but they just have not looked great the past three weeks. So hopefully Greg Adkins can get that worked out, but there was success to be found tonight. Literally, the, uh, the broadcast got to a point of just showing Arch Manning, Ugga the Dog, Donuts, and and the clown that is Must Champ. But yep, that was a night, but Gamecocks fall, but but there was success to be found. Prayers for Sherrod Green, who got hurt, I think, in like the first or second damn play of the game. I don't think... The way it looked, I feel like it's probably going to be season ending though, which sucks for him. But prayers for him. But yeah, now we move on to Kentucky week, in which Kentucky nearly lost to FCS Chattanooga. So they are definitely beatable. We can definitely be staring a 3-1 start to the Shane Beamer era, which would be great. And then Clemson also struggled against Georgia Tech. So, suck to suck, Clemson. Sucks to suck. Oh, and great teams cover. We were 31 point dog, 31 and 32 point dogs. We lost by 27. So great teams cover. And one more thing, another shout out to the Carolina band. They did great tonight. I heard them a lot mightier than the, than the Georgia Redcoat band. So yep, they're definitely mighty. And also, I really appreciate hearing some spin cycle with the drum grooves. The good job, like the 10 ish drumline members who went. All right, it is a brand new day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sunday, September the 19th, 2021. Just coming back from from church, the first time I went since getting out of school last semester because it's just been so hectic with the Sundays, going home after EIU, just busy after ECU. It's just been so hectic, but I'm glad to make it back. Man, just reflecting more on the Georgia game. But again, the scoreboard says it was a blowout. And, you know, we covered the Vegas spread, but 
like again the biggest takeaway was you know we never we never stopped fighting our guy kept going to the very end Dodie looked good in his first in-game snap since the you know the fire he got thrown into last season at the end after Muschamp got fired defense continued to fight the tails off again O-line it didn't look great that's really the only bad thing about yesterday but I'm just hoping that you know the whole switching quarterback because it's a different game with Doty versus Nolan and then you know Beamer said it best like when asked why they were struggling they have like like a hundred five star athletes all over their defense <laughs> so I'm just hoping that you know with all of that you know our, our O-line will get better for the, for the Kentucky game this weekend which you know I feel like that's gonna be a good game for us to get the win. Dodie Telsey, he's gonna be starting quarterback. O line can hopefully improve. Defense can just, you know, still be decent, better than we expected. Kentucky did not look great this past weekend, nearly losing to Chattanooga at home. And the SEC Nation is actually coming to campus, have we learned this morning. Marty and McGee are coming. Paul Feinbaum is coming. Big game. I think a lot of people are surprised they're coming. They're going to Arlington for for a top twenty matchup between A and M and Arkansas. But I'll take it. I'll take the publicity, especially if we can get a dub. But yep, game week again. We're gonna be back in Willie B with eighty thousand of our closest friends. Let's get it.